Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. My name is Estelle, otherwise known as Comsci Geek, and I'm a computing teacher. I also develop resources for the programme. We specialise in delivering computing workshops that are accessible, educational and fun. You are watching part two of our Crazy Mazes workshop. This part of the workshop will require you to have a PC or laptop to take part. You could also take part on a tablet device. Did you know all part ones of our workshops are unplugged, meaning you don't have any need to have any tech to take part? Just a device to watch the video. You can watch any of our previously streamed workshops on our YouTube channel. Just search YouTube for Digital Schoolhouse. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts or take part in the workshop alongside me. If you do decide to pause the, the workshop, just be aware you might need to skip the video back to carry on from where you left off. The Digital Schoolhouse team are ready and waiting in the chat should you have any questions throughout and also we've got some guests in there too um, who will help you specifically with Construct 3 today. So thank you very much to the Skira team and I'll also be taking five minutes to answer your questions at the end of the workshop. Parents and guardians, you might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources but after that feel free to join in or sit nearby to supervise if you want to. Let's get started. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what you're going to need for today's workshop. I would suggest it's a good idea to have a pen and paper ready just to take some notes as we're going through. Um, this isn't completely necessary, but you might find it useful. So pen, paper, or a pencil and paper, depending on what you prefer to work with. You will also need to access the Construct 3 website, which I'm gonna show you how to access that now. So the Construct 3 website is easy to get onto and I'm just going to talk you through where you'll find that and what you need to type in to the search engine to be able to find it. So just bear with me one second while I get my browser open. So a browser is what we call uh, the software that you use to access the internet. So you will need to go onto um, a search engine such as Google and search for Construct 3. Construct 3. Once you pop that in, it will be it should be the first result, but it's construct.net if you can't see it. Um, click on the link. It will probably take you to a page that looks like this. You need to click on where it says try it now. If you scroll down the page slightly and find where it says launch now, and that will launch the software for you. There's no need to pay do the paid for version or anything with what we're doing in today's workshop. So the free version does everything that you need for learning how to make your maze game. Um, for anyone that's interested in, in um, getting the full resources for this workshop, so perhaps you want to do this in your own classroom, I'll very quickly explain where you'll find those before we properly get started. Um, so if you want to get the full teaching resources for this, it's digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. Um, maybe, bear with me a second, I'll quickly log out of my account so you can see it properly, there you go. Um, go to resources and then hit up, uh, click on live workshops. If you scroll down the page and find Crazy Mazes, you might need to scroll further down the page if you're accessing this on YouTube because it's only our latest one for that'll be at the top. Click on Crazy Mazes and then you'll find all the files are here at the bottom here. Um, if you do want the full resources, you do need to sign up. Um, it's completely free, um, just register for an account and then you'll be able to access the full workshop pack for Crazy Mazes if you're interested in, interested in delivering this yourself in your classroom. Okay, so that is everything for where you'll find the resources for today's workshop. So let's properly start today's workshop on Crazy Mazes. <coughs> Excuse me. Okie dokie. Okay, so welcome to Crazy Mazes part two. This workshop, as I said, does require you to have a PC or laptop. Um, you can also take part using a uh, tablet device such as an iPad if you want to. Just be aware you might need to do things slightly differently to how I do them. So just be aware of that um, if you do decide to use a tablet device. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning about how to implement a pre-written algorithm within a game engine such as Construct 3. We're going to be learning how to create and use variables within your game. We're going to be using selection and loops in our game. 
Um, we're also going to be learning how to identify idea, uh, areas for improvement and modification. And we're also going to be implementing changes to our game. Okay, my computer's just gone bananas. You can hear it making really wonderful noises. So I'm going to just unplug something. Hopefully that will stop that from happening. Sorry about that. Okay. So Construct 3 lets you program in either a visual block based language, um, which is a bit like a step up from scratch, or in um, a JavaScript code. Um, we're not going to be using any JavaScript today, but if you are a student that's interested in finding out more about um, actual programming language that are text based, you might want to have a look at some of the examples for using JavaScript perhaps later on. Um, it lets you make 2D games, animations, uh, interactive stories, and you could even make a presentation or even an app in Construct 3. So if you've watched any of our previous workshops about making games, so we did a uh, example, uh, we looked at how to design a prototype for the Gigantosaurus game, um, that you could then take further by using Construct 3 and making your own version of the game. Or equally, if you did the um, app in a day workshop, you could take that further and actually design your app using Construct 3. So there is a few things that you can use Construct 3 for. So I'm going to, I'll be already on this, but just to remind you in case anyone has just joined us late, you will need to open up Construct 3. So um, I tend to use Google Chrome. Um, I find it's a little bit more stable. So it does work in other browsers as well. But um, if you have Google Chrome, it probably is a good idea to use it. Go to the Construct 3 website, which is um, editor.construct.net, or you can just search for it, Construct 3, click on the link and it will take you to the website. The next thing we're going to do is how to start a new project. So I'm just going to hop over into um, my browser window so I can show you what I'm doing. So bear with me a minute while I quickly hop over and do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to click on where it says new project and it'll bring up this little window here and it's going to ask you to put in a name. So we're going to give it a name, which is just going to be Maze Game. Um, you can make it more specific if you want to, and you can also change the name of it later on if you need to. Um, we're going to leave all the other settings as they are for today and just click on Create. That will then load the Construct 3 editor. So we can see a few different bits and pieces here. We can see the properties bar, which is this area on the left hand side. We can see in the middle the, the viewport which is the area that you'll actually be able to see when we run the game. So it's really important just to be aware of that dotted line that you can see. That dotted line tells you what will be visible when we actually play the game. So you want to avoid putting things outside that because you won't be able to see them. We can also see a project bar and we can also see the tile map. We're not going to be using tile map today, so you could actually just close that. Um, it will give you a warning and just click close bar. So we've got the project bar and the properties bar. And they, those are the things that we're mainly going to be using in today's um, work. Um, I'm very going to sorry. I'm very quickly going to explain just quickly how to save your work, um, so that you can save it regularly as we're going along. Because I'm sure, as you are all aware, occasionally computers do things that we don't want them to do, and you don't want to lose your work. So as you're going through the um, workshop, every now and then, just do a menu project save as and then click on download a copy and what that will do is it will save a copy of the file that you're working on into your downloads folder i'll just say that again menu project save as and then click on download a copy there are other options you can do things like cloud save and actually set it up so it works with your um uh with your dropbox account or your uh, um account and there's various different ones you can use it with. Um, but just be aware if you do that, you'll just need to spend a bit of time setting that up now. So you, if you do want to do that, pause it, do it now and then, and then come back and join us. But otherwise, download a copy is a nice quick way of doing it. And it means it will be saved quickly without having to go through like logging in and things like that. OK, so that is very quickly looking at how we set up Construct 3. OK, so I'm just going to hop back into the presentation and then we'll carry on with what we are going to be looking at today. OK, so I've already shown you some of this, but just to reiterate in case um, any of it's just forgotten. So we did uh, create new project. It created a blank project window, which allowed us, which will be allowing us to edit and add things to our games. And as I talked to you about the dotted line um, around the area in the middle of the layout, this area here is called the viewport. It's the design. This is the design view and it's where you'll create and position your objects for your game. 
Um, so you can think of a layout a little bit like a game level or a menu screen. So this is going to be everything that's going to be used for one particular level or, or a menu screen for your game. Uh, we've also talked about how to save your work and I've talked you through using menu project save as and download a copy just to uh, make sure you're saving as you're going along. Okay, the other thing very quickly, if you do have an accidental um, close during your um, workshop today or when you're perhaps using Construct 3 later on, if you want to open a file that you've downloaded, all you do is you click on file, you go to your, I've said your computer science folder, but wherever you've saved your work, in this case it's most likely going to be in your downloads folder, and then um, it will just open it up for you. So remember to save your work regularly. Okay, so we're going to be creating a challenging game using a sprite and a maze today. So let's have a little think about how we might think about writing an algorithm for our game. So try to work out how your game might run. What instructions are you going to need? What order do you think they need to go in? And would you need any new instruction blocks that you perhaps haven't tried yet? So if you're completely new to Construct 3, then you might say that actually all the instruction blocks are going to be completely new and I haven't used them before. Um, so what instructions do you think you might need? So this is where you might want to use a pen and paper and just start to think about and note down a few ideas of the things that you, you're going to need. So I know that my character is going to need um, some sort of four directional movement. Okay, and that's one of the things I definitely am, am going to need. So if I think about that in terms of an algorithm and what that algorithm might look like, it's going to look something along the lines of if arrow key is pressed and then is this going to be a right arrow um, turn right for example if the up arrow key is pressed go forward one space etc okay so this is the kind of thing that we're going to need to be reproducing in construct 3 today for getting our character to move around a maze so what you could do now is just um, um pause the string if you want to and just complete any algorithms that you feel that you might need for your game so take your time pop in any others that you think you might need and then once you're ready unpause and then you can join in with me to start to think about implementing them into the, into the game itself. So if you have completed those, you probably ended up with two more. One for the down arrow, we're only going to worry about movement for now. And then you probably also got a left arrow. Okay, so that might be what you've ended up with. You might have also thought a little bit about some specific um, instructions that need to go in with a bit more detail. And you might have thought about some of the things that we did when we were thinking about algorithms in part one of this workshop and how we needed to be really precise in those instructions. And actually the instruction just turn right might not be quite enough detail. So for example, if we say turn right, how much are we saying turn right? Do we mean turn right 90 degrees or do we mean turn right but actually go all the way around okay so we've talked quite a lot in these workshops about how precise we need to be in our instructions and actually i think these instructions here are not actually detailed enough and i need to say that i want to turn 90 degrees because that's how much i'd expect the um, character to be able to turn when i press the keys Right, so let's start to think about implementing this actually in our game now. And we're going to hop back into our PowerPoint. There we go. OK, so we're going to start by adding a new object. So to add a new object to your game, all you do is you double click in an empty space in the middle of the layout. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to come out of this and I'll show you in Construct 3. You can do it yourself as well. One thing to be aware of when you're working with anything like this, don't be scared. Don't be worried about trying things out and seeing what happens. You can always reload if you need to. So we do a double click and it will bring up this um, menu that you can choose from. Now, we need to add a new 
object. Now the object that we're going to be adding is called a sprite. Now you can scroll down and you can find the sprite, which is there, or you can filter as well. So if you're feeling a little bit lazy, you can type in the word sprite and then you'll find it, it appears there. And it's the one that looks like a little space invader alien. So double click on him and it will make a little crosshair appear. The crosshair is there for you to place your sprite. So you can decide where you want to put it in the layout. And I'm just going to click over here. And then what it's going to do is it's going to open up the animations editor. So this is where we can design what our sprite looks like. So at the moment it's quite dark. If you prefer to make it a bit brighter so you can see a little bit more easily, what you can do is you can click on this toggle background brightness. Um, if you click on that, it will just swap between the dark option and the lighter option. So you can choose which one you prefer, which one works best for you. The other thing I'll quickly show you is you can zoom in by clicking on this uh, magnifying glass with a little plus in it. You can also zoom out, um, but be aware that the area that you want wanting to fill generally is this grid here. Okay, so that is what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to do a very quick recap of all that in case any of you need a bit more information or perhaps didn't quite catch something. So I'll do a quick recap for, for anyone that needs that. So we are going to do a double click on the middle of the layout to add a new object. Um, oops, I apologise. We're going to do adding a sprite object. Then we're going to do a click where we want to place it using the crosshair. And this is where we're up to next. We're now going to look at how we draw a sprite. And we're going to draw um, a frog. So a frog's going to be our main character moving around our maze. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. And you see that once we've completed, we just click on the cross to close the window. So we're going to jump over and do that now. Um, a bit of a pun there, isn't it? Jump, <laughs> obviously, with making a frog. OK, so let me hop back into there and that one there we go right so i'm going to design a frog so you've got some different um tools down the side i'm going to be using the brush tool and you can change the color by dragging the slider so this one here changes the brightness so you can either go from um, a dark to a, a bright version of whatever color is selected and you can also select colors in the color palette as well and as you can see darker options of it by sliding to the left lighter options of it by sliding to the right. Now I'm going to do an outline for my frog so I'm going to start with the dark side. Um, the other thing you can do is you can change the size of the brush so you can see at the moment the size of my brush is, brush is 60, 62 now so I just dragged it down slightly and that's a lot that's very big for what I need to produce. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that smaller so that I work with something that is going to be suitable for an outline. So I'm going to try four and see what size that makes it. I think it's a little bit too small. Let's try 10. So you can just experiment until you find the right size. Um, that looks about right for, the, for what I want to do. And I'm going to draw my frog. So let's see. Hopefully I'll draw one that looks as good as my original design. Um, I can always go back in and make changes if I make a mistake. So I'm going to do my little frog. There's his head and his body. I'm going to add some little feet. There we go, and I need to add some eyes. One, and then we do a second one. There we go, and some nose, um, little nostrils, and you probably need some little feet that are going to poke out here as well. Oh, I quite like this little frog dude. There we go, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this fill tool, this one here, the one that looks like a little paint bucket with a little drip of paint, um, and I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to get a nice green colour for filling in. Now the fill tool works by, um, it will fill between any lines that are completely joined up. So what I mean by that, we select a nice green, there we go, what I mean by that is as long as the lines completely join together, it will fill the space in, in the middle. OK, so if you find that when you try to do a fill, it doesn't actually fill just the bit in the middle, it's probably because your lines don't quite join up and you might need to just go back and just make sure the outlines are completely joined to each other. There we go. So you can see I've left the spaces for the eyes. Whoops, and I accidentally there clicked on the actual outline, so I've made the outline green. But I can undo that. So I can go up here. Um, that's not rotate. That's not the right one. There it is. 
this one here, this little arrow here, I can click on that once and that will take me back a step and I can carry back on. So if you make any mistakes, just use the undo to undo the previous step to make it look correct. So the last thing we do is just to colour in the eyes, the actual eyeball themselves. I'm going to drag this all the way to the right to get the white. And I'm going to add the white. Oops, so again, I've done it again. Click on undo. So you can see it's so easy to make a little mistake and fill them in. There we go. So there is my lovely little frog dude who is going to be moving around my maze. Or maybe I should say hopping around my maze. If you need a little bit of time, feel free to pause the stream here and spend a bit longer on completing your design. But if you're ready to move on with me, then that's also fine. In which case, all you do is you're going to press that X in the corner, which I'll show you to do now. So just click on the X here and that will add your object into your game. Okay, if you get it into the game and you realise actually doesn't look quite right, or for this example, you can see actually it has some um, outline around the outside where the frog isn't in, isn't in that outline, and it means it's got excess background. There's something that we can do about that. So if you want to make any changes once you've popped it in, just do a double click. It will open it back up again in the um, editor. I'll just do that again. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me try that again. Maybe I need to do it from the side for some reason. Okay, so normally you can just double click on the um, the actual character itself, but for some reason I, my computer's now decided I have to do it from here. So you can do it from the object types. So just double click on it and it will open up the animations editor and you can make any changes. So what you can do is just get rid of any excess around the outside by using the crop tool, which is this one up here. So all we do is we just click on it once and that will get rid of any excess background around the outside of our shape. Once you've done that, you just close it again. Now that's quite important because if we have excess outline around the outside of our object, it can interfere with the different objects that we're gonna have it interacting with later on. So that's why we do that. Okay, so let's have a think about what we're going to be doing next. So we've designed our beautiful little frog and you've clicked on the cross to close it. So the next thing I want you to have a quick think about is how coordinates work in Construct 3. So coordinates are something that you might have come across in maths and we use them for describing the actual position of something in our game. So that's how, where they're used in game design. So you can see, I've done a little bit of an example on here. We have the X axis, which goes um, from left to right which we could also describe as the horizontal axis. axis. Um, so when we were looking in part one at drawing a kite, we thought about the horizontal lines that we were drawing, remember? And then we've also got the Y axis, which is going from top to bottom, and that is the vertical, if we wanted to think about it in terms of the things that we talked about in part one. Um, and then we can talk about how many pixels across the X or Y axis the uh, position is that we want to talk about. Now, in Construct 3, we can go in this example, depending on how you set your layout out, um, in this example, you can go from zero to 854 pixels. Um, and remember, pixels are the little squares that make up your screen. And we talked about that in previous workshops. So if you want to know more about how that works, maybe have a look at Crazy Graphics, and that will talk about in more detail what pixels are and how they work on your screen. And then the y-axis goes from zero up to 480 pixels. And then, so this blob in this top left-hand corner is at zero, zero. So zero on the x-axis and zero on the y-axis. Okay, and we can use that to describe any position on our uh, layout. So where's the frog? If you put him right up in the top right-hand corner there, what position would he be at? So quick reminder, there we go. Have a little think, what do you think the X and the Y position would be? Let's see if you were right. He would be at X 854 and Y 0. Did you get that right? Well done. So the sprite is in the top right hand corner of the viewport in that example. Now let's go to the next one. Where is the frog positioned now? Can you work it out? Quick recap in case you need to remind yourself. There you go. Okay, so where is our little froggy this time? He is in X0, Y, 480, and the sprite is in the bottom left-hand corner of the viewport. Okay, so 
what would the x y coordinates be if the frog was right in the middle of the layout so pop him in here what do you think do you think it's a x 100 y 100 b x 427 y 240 c x minus 100 y minus 100 or d x 240 y 427 so a couple of little tips for you have a think about how many pixels wide the viewport is and also how many pixels high the viewport is okay i'll give you a little bit of a chance to work that one out yourself you might want to get your pen and paper and work that one out that's why i said about having some pen and paper for this can you work out what the x and y position would be if we put our little frog dude in the middle of our layout Okay, that's me. I'm gonna pop up the answer. So the answer, oh, I didn't put the answer in. <laughs> the answer is B, X 427, Y 240, because it's exactly in the middle. So you do 854 divided by two to work out what the X position is and 480 divided by two to find out what the Y position is. And that would put your frog right in the middle of the layout. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a good quick preview of your game so you can see what it looks like. So we do that by clicking on the preview button, which looks like a play button. If you use something like Spotify, you might have seen that before. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's jump back out and go and do that in Construct 3. Okay, so here we go. So all I need to do is click on the little play button up here to do a preview. And that should pop up a little pop-up window that will show you what your game looks like at the moment. If it doesn't come up, you might find that there's a little um, a little bit that comes up over in the right-hand side over here that tells you that pop-ups are blocked, and you need to just click on it and say that you want to allow pop-ups. So if that pops up, feel free to do a quick pause, ask your mum or your dad or someone to help you do that if you're not quite sure what to click on, and just allow pop-ups on this website. Um, that's if you can't see the little pop-up window. So you should be able to see your little froggy dude in the preview now. So this is what it would look like if we were running the game. You can do a little test, see if you can press your arrow key, see if anything happens. Nothing's happening for me. And you're quite right, nothing should be happening because we've not actually added any programming yet. So that's what we're going to be doing next. But before we do that, I'm actually going to jump back one step because I've realised there's one thing that we haven't added and you might have spotted it as we as I quickly jumped through the PowerPoint earlier. Uh, I added one other object into um, on the PowerPoint and that was an object for the keyboard and we're going to very quickly add that now. So we remember to add an object all you do is you do a double click in the middle of the layout and it brings up that object menu and you're going to find the one that says keyboard. So you can scroll down and find the picture of the keyboard or you can type in keyboard into the search and filter. Um, and what that does is it just means that we're adding a particular object type to show the computer that we're going to be controlling our frog by using the keyboard. We're going to control all our objects using the keyboard. This is where if you're using a laptop, a, a laptop or a PC, you want to do the same as me, add the keyboard. But if you're using a tablet computer, so an iPad or something like that for doing this, you might want to consider using touch instead because you're going to be um, needing to think about moving your character by touching on the screen. I'll add, I'll talk a bit more about things that you can do differently if you're using an iPad as we go along. But for most of you, add the keyboard and click on insert. And you'll see it gets added to the object types over here. Okay, so make sure that you've got both of those. You've got your little froggy sprite and your keyboard. In fact, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name. So at the moment it's called sprite. So if I do a quick right click on it and I go to where it says rename, I'm going to type in frog so that he's actually described a little bit better in the name of the object. There we go. So we've got frog and then the keyboard object type. So make sure you've got both of those in your game. If you haven't quite got those, pop the pause button, add them in and then join me in a minute if you need to. Okay. Right, so let's think about what we're going to be doing next. So we've added our frog in. We did a little test to see what happened if we pressed the arrow keys and we quite rightly found that nothing happened. We need to use a little bit of programming to get the arrow keys to interact with the sprite. So our algorithm might look like this. Start, 
if the key's pressed, move the sprite and then end. And in fact, that looks very similar to what we planned on our paper at the very beginning of the workshop. We thought about if you press a key, you might turn right. And we also talked about the different number of degrees that you might turn right and left and then use the forward and down arrows just to move up and down the screen. So that is what we're going to need to be thinking about next. So how are we going to go about adding a, the instructions for controlling our sprite? We're going to use something called a behaviour. So you're going to right click on the frog, you're going to click on the, the word add, and then you're going to click on the word behaviour. Once, And then let me show you how we're going to do that. So I'm going to jump back over into Construct 3 and I'm going to show you what this looks like. As usual, if you want to just watch to start with, I will go through this as a recap as well um, after if you get um, a little bit stuck. So back into Construct 3, back onto my game. And you can see once it swaps over, there we go. Uh, there's my little froggy. I'm going to do a right click on him. I'm going to go to add. I'm going to click on the word behavior. And it brings up the behavior menu. And there's lots of different behaviors that you can add. And maybe if you enjoy doing what we're doing today, you might want to do a bit of experimentation with what some of those other things do. But for the one we're going to be using is the one that says eight direction. So click on that and then click on add. And then what you can do is you can press the little play preview button again. And now if you press your arrow keys, you should find that your frog actually starts to move. But there he goes. And I can go back the other way. I can go down the screen. Woo! And I can go up. And that is my frog added. Now you can do a little bit of experimentation here as well. So once you've added your eight direction movement, as long as you've got your frog selected, you'll be able to see that I've got different behaviours over here on the left hand side. I've got max speed, acceleration, deacceleration, or deceleration. I've got eight direction movement and there's a drop down menu to change that. I've got set angle and there's a drop down menu for that. I've got default controls and enabled. And what you could do is a bit of experimentation to see what actually needs to be used in your game. So for example, in my original plan, if I hop back over here, you can see that I said it was gonna have four directional movement. So actually, one of the things I'm gonna do straight away is I'm gonna swap my directional movement to just four directions. And I can do that by changing in that drop down menu. The other thing I think at the moment is it moves a little bit slowly, so I'm going to experiment with changing the speed. Uh, and we're going to try, uh, let's try and make it double the, the speed. And the other thing I'm going to change is I'm going to have 90 degree intervals on my angle. Um, so do have an experiment with all those different settings and see what happens. And then press the preview and see if that now works better for what your game should look like and what the, the controls should feel like. So there we go. I'm actually a lot happier with that. I think the other thing I might do is I think there's the deceleration means that he kind of like drifts a little bit. So if I show you again, you can see that he's actually kind of drifting as I press the, the keys. So when I go down and I take my finger off the key, he kind of keeps drifting. So what I can do with that is get rid of the deceleration so that it isn't that um, drifting. And I can also match the acceleration with my max speed and see if that makes any difference. So once you've tried a few different settings out and you're happy with what your game looks like. Oh, so that made it didn't but that doesn't work at all for mine. OK, so experiment until you have something that, that works how you'd like it. OK, so pop the pause on if you need to right now and experiment with um, changing the eight direction properties until you have something that you are really happy with before you move on. So I'm actually gonna pop a few of my settings back to what they were, because I feel that they were better um, with some of the original um, settings. So I'm gonna pop a few of those back like that. Okay, so once you're ready to move on, then um, do join us. But if you do need to pause here, then that's absolutely fine as well. So we're going to be carrying on now with the next part. So quick recap of what we've just done. So we added a new behaviour by clicking uh, right click on the, the frog and we went to behaviour. We used eight direction movement, we used preview and then we did some testing of our game. And we also thought about some settings to make it work more appropriately. So 
we've um, actually, we've done this as well. We've thought about how to make the the frog point in, in a particular direction. Um, and actually, we've already got mirroring set up because when we press the right and left arrow keys, he's automatically swapping to be a mirrored image. So we don't actually need to do anything with changing that for this particular game. So now you're going to create a maze block. That's the next thing we're going to do. So to do that, you do exactly the same process as we did for making our frog. You do a double click in the layout. And we're going to hop over and show you how to do it in case you have forgotten. But I'm also going to do it because I need to add it myself. Um, so we're going to do a double click in the layout. Do you know what? I think it's actually my computer being a bit weird. So I'm going to do something slightly different. Um, because my double click isn't working properly in the layout right now, I'm going to use a right click. But I'll tell you what to do um, as I'm going along. I'm going to go to insert new object or double click to open this up automatically. Um, and I'm going to add a new sprite. So there is my sprite. I'm going to do a double click on it and you can see there's the crosshair for placing it in the layout again. And this time all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fill tool and I'm going to select a colour. I'm going to go for a nice blue. I'm going to use that slider to change the brightness and go for probably roughly in the middle. And I'm going to use the fill tool just to fill the whole of that um, square as a blue square. And then I'm going to close it. That's all I need to do. Once it's in there, I can resize it by just putting my mouse cursor. That's the little pointer that you can see. Can you see there's like little um, objects just in the corner? Those are, uh, they're there for you to use to resize the sprite. So if you put your cursor on top of one of those and just drag by clicking and holding on your mouse, you can then resize it to the right size. So you might want to experiment with that. The other thing I'm going to do is, like I did before, whoops, I've just managed to jump. If that happens, and I know a lot of students, this used to happen to me in the classroom, if that happens, all you do is you just drag these little bars back into the middle of the page and you'll find it will appear again. There you go. So it's easily done. I've just managed to do it myself. So just drag it until you can see the objects again. So the other thing we're going to do is just quickly rename the object because it's because just Sprite doesn't really describe what it is. So we're going to do a right click on it go to rename and I'm going to call this maze because this is one of I'm going to call it maze block because that is what it's going to be and I press enter now you can see it's already it's removed any invalid characters that's because in construct 3 you can't put spaces but what it's done is something that we call camel casing that just means that each new word starts with a capital letter so it's automatically done that for me um, and just closed the gap up so it's called maze block and I've added it in there so add that yourself. If you want to spend a bit of time experimenting with changing the colours and maybe changing the design, all you do, like I showed you before, is just double click on the object and that will open up the editor again and you can make any changes. So you could add um, a design on top of it if you want to, but just be aware, we're going to be um, duplicating this in a minute. So whatever you add to this is going to appear on all of your blocks. So just be aware, if you don't want it to appear everywhere, then don't add it. Okie dokie. So make sure you've got those in. If you need to give yourself a bit of time, pause now before we move on. Um, and I'm going to do a quick recap of what we've just gone over. OK, so what we've just done is we added a maze block. We did that by double clicking in the layout, which opened, uh, which gave us a little cursor. Oh, no, it didn't. Sorry, it gave us a menu where we went to Sprite. And then once we've added the Sprite, it turns to a little crosshair and then we drop it. And then it gave us the animations editor to design it. And we use the fill tool to colour in the square. So as I said uh, a moment ago, we're actually going to be duplicating that to use it for our maze. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a right click on the object that we've created and we're going to go to copy. And then once we've done that, we can then create a maze using lots of copies of our block. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to jump back into my Construct 3 window and we're going to add that in next. So let's hop back into that. Du, 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 du. There we go. Um, there we go. So as I showed you in that example, I do a right click, I go to copy, and then I'm gonna do a right click again, and I'm gonna click on the word paste, and that creates a second copy of it. And then I don't need to do the copy bit again, I can just do the paste again. And I can do that as many times as I need for the number of blocks I'm going to need. I can also then drag them around and use them to lay out my maze. This might be the point where you realise that your frog is a little bit big and you might want to resize him. So I'm just going to take him down a little bit. 
So experiment with getting your blocks where you want them and laying them out as you need around your um, lay, uh, your viewport. You might want to make have slightly smaller blocks. That's absolutely fine. If you prefer to work with smaller blocks, that's fine. The other thing you can do if you're a little bit lazy, like me, um, you can actually select more than one. So I'm actually going to select a couple. There you go. And I can do copy and paste. And I can do the same things I did before with copy and paste but instead of just doing one at a time I'm doing two now so that's something else that you might want to consider doing so take your time and design yourself a full maze um, you might need to think of it a bit more about the size of your frog and resize and move them around if, as you need to the other thing you can do is if he's not, uh, not facing the direction that you want him to start in if you move your mouse to the outside corner you can see it turns into like a um, the cursor turns into an arrow, uh, like an arrow with two heads on it. That allows you to then rotate him as well. So you might want to do that so that he faces the right direction to start with. Now, this is another moment where you probably will want to pause because I'm going to go on to the next bit, um, but I'm not going to complete my maze, but you probably will want to. Um, the other thing I'm very good, quickly just going to explain, if you can't see the whole of your viewport um, when you're designing your maze and you need to be able to see it, what you can do is you can zoom in and out so you can see the zoom level here is at 100 percent at the moment and you might want to change that so to do that on your keyboard there is a button that is called control it says c t r l on it um, i'll try and show you with this with the visualizer quickly um, hopefully you can see it so just bear me a minute because i'm going to switch over onto the visualizer to show you what i'm talking about and hopefully you'll be able to see this um, with enough detail so just bear me one moment while I do this um, okay so I need to work out make sure it's up the right way so you can see uh, there we go that should do it right so you are going to need to press the control key and you can see the control key is this one here control and while you're holding that key down you're going to press the plus and minus keys and I'm going to just pop over here and you see the plus and minus keys are these two here OK, so they might be in slightly different position on your keyboard, but on mine, my control key is over here and then my plus and minus keys are just here. And you can use that to zoom in and out. So that's something that you might want to do now. So use that to zoom in and out of your viewport so you can see everything. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I'm holding control and using the plus and minus. So minus zooms out and plus zooms in. OK, so that's something that you might want to do just to make sure you can see everything. Just check everything is where it should be. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to think about the background. Um, so at the moment, we don't actually have a background. Um, now, there's a few different options of what you can do for backgrounds. Um, but what we're going to actually do is we're going to use a tiled background. Um, again, this is because it makes it a little bit easier for us and we can do something that means that we can create a really simple design and then spread it over the background. So we're going to add a tiled background object and then we're going to click in the layout to place it. So again, I'm going to hop back over and show you what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do is... Da -da -da -da. I'm going to do a double click. If it will let me do a double click, I keep forgetting it's not doing it for the moment. Um, I'm going to do a right click, insert new object. I'm going to go down to where it says tiled background. Again, you can always click on search and type in tile and that will um, filter for you. Go to insert, it makes that little um, crosshair appear. Click anywhere and then you're going to choose a colour to use as your background. Now my background is going to be this bright fuchsia colour. I'm going to use the fill tool. Again, if you want to add a little design onto it, you can do, but be aware that this is going to look a bit different to what we've done previously. I'll just show you what, what it will look like by adding a little design to it. Um, because what it's going to do when I close it, and I'm going to actually resize it over the, the um, full area of my viewport, what it does, there we go, you can see it's actually making copies of that uh, background. OK, so that's what a tiled background does. It makes lots of copies, lots of tiles that it then will fill your background with. OK, now that's 
okay it looks fine I'm quite happy with that if you want to make changes as usual just double click on it in the object type you can change it you could get remove the design you could add a design if you prefer to have one um, one thing you can also use is that little dropper tool so if you accidentally lost the color you were using which I have so I can't select it over here I can use the dropper tool to make sure I get the same color again and I'm going to use the fill tool just to refill those little designs that I used and then close it so you'll see my design's now just a solid colour. Now this isn't overly brilliant because at the moment my beautiful background is over the top of everything else so we need to move it to the back. Now to do that you do a right click on your mouse which will bring up a menu. You go to where it says Z order and you just click on where it says send to bottom of layer and that just means it's going to send it underneath everything else like that. So I'll just do that again in case anyone didn't catch it. Right click on it Go to Z order and then click on send to bottom of layer and it should pop every, uh, go right down to the bottom and then you should be able to see everything on top again. Okay, so that is what you need to do. So now we've got the maze. Hopefully you've got a maze completely filling the whole of your viewport. If you haven't, pause it, add it in. Um, you've got your character in there and we've got a background that we're using as well. So let's hop back over and see what we're going to learn about next. I might do a very quick recap of what we've done as well just in case you need to remind yourself. So we added a tiled background, which we did by um, double clicking in the layout, selecting tiled background, and then we just clicked anywhere in the layout to place it. We then designed a single tile of our background. Um, I kept it as a single color, but you could also design a pattern if you prefer. Um, we added that in and then we used the Z order to make sure it went into the very bottom of the layer so that we could um, see all our design on top of the, black, the background colour that we created. So we are now going to add some events to our um, design. So trigger actions, um, sorry, events are trigger actions which depend on a particular condition. So you may want something to happen if a sprite cat touches another sprite. So for example, if the dog touches a cat, the cat says meow. What should happen if the frog touches the side of the maze? Do you actually know what happens at the moment if the frog touches the side of the maze? Let's go and do a quick preview and find out what actually happens at the moment. So let's go and have a look. If we touch the side of the maze, what actually happens at the moment? Um, mm, 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 there he is. So we're going to, there we go. So if I press preview, I'm going to go and touch the side of my maze. At the moment, he goes straight through it. Okay, and that's something that we definitely shouldn't be happening. So we don't want that to happen. So that's what we need to think about next. So what should happen? What should happen when he touches the side of the maze? Well, he shouldn't do anything. Or in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to make him actually start back at the beginning again every time we touch the side of the maze. Now we're going to do that by using something called an event sheet. So the event sheet, you might have noticed that there's different opt different lay um, sorry, different tabs at the top. And we've been in the layout tab so far. We're going to go into the event sheet tab, and that's where we're going to be adding some events to control what happens with our uh, frog in the maze. So what blocks do we need to use in which order? So if the frog touches the side of the maze, move back to the beginning. So what order do you think these blocks need to do, need to go in? What do you think? Okay, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be if the frog collides with a maze block, the frog is going to go back to a, pos a, sp a specific position in our layout. And I'll show you how we're going to make sure we get the right position now. So let's have a go at adding those instructions into our event sheet now. So to do that, let's hop back into our design. There we go. So we're going to go to the event sheet, which is this one here, as I said. We're going to click on where it says add event and then it's going to ask you what you want to base your event on. So we want to base it on the frog and then go next and we want to say if he collides with something. So if you scroll down, you can find on collision with. You could also type, start to type in the word collision into the search to do a filter. Double click on it and then you can choose the object. So we're going to choose the maze block. There we go. 
And that adds the condition side of our event. So this is what is going to happen. This is what's going to trigger a particular action. So the action that we want to happen is make our frog go back to a, posi a specific position in our maze. So we're going to go to add action, select our frog, and then go to next. And then we want it to go to a particular position. So what we're going to do for that is you're going to find the, um, let me find, remind myself which one I'm looking for. Let's scroll down. Da, 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 da. There's lots of different ones. You can scroll through and see if you can find, find the right one. There it is. Set position. So you could type in position up there. So we're going to set position. And then we're going to uh, set the X and Y position. Now this is where we need to do a little bit of working out to make sure we get it in the right place. So you can just click done for a minute, which will set it as zero, zero, which isn't what we want it to be, but we're gonna go back into the layout and make sure we get him in the right position. So select your little frog dude and put him where he needs to go back to every time he touches the side of the maze. And that will make it appear up in this top corner here. And this is where you can grab your notepad and you can quickly write that position down. So I'm gonna write down the position on my notepad. Remember it's X and Y, so one, six, three, one, six, four. And I'm gonna put that into my action. So I've gone back to the event sheet, double click, and I'm gonna type it in. So one, six, three, and then the Y position is gonna be one, six, four. There we go, and then click done. So now if I press my little play button, I should find my little frog dude. If I move him down a little bit and then I press, I go into the side of the maze, he starts at the top again and I have to then move down again. So just test it a few times and just make sure it's working correctly. You should find that every time you touch the sides of the maze, he goes back to the beginning. Okay, so there we have our very basic maze game complete. But what do we need to do next? Hmm. Let's have a think about what would be the next thing that we would want to add. One thing that you might want to think about, just uh, just be aware of, if anyone's just done a little bit of testing and found that it didn't actually work, a couple of things just to think about. Um, do a double click on your character. Remember, double click in the objects menu on the right hand side. And you just might want to make sure that you can actually fit it in. So we did do this removing the excess um, area around the outside. You might also just want to resize it. Just make sure it fits in pr uh, properly. So that's something that you might want to do if it doesn't work. Just be aware of that um, it's, when you do your testing. If it doesn't quite fit in or you can't move it, that might be because it's a little bit too big for your maze. OK, so loop and repeat. So a loop is a part of a computer program that causes the instructions within a loop to be repeated. So for example, if the, the sprite touches the maze, go to the start of the maze. Now, in some bits of software, like in um, Scratch, you might have seen something like this, repeat five, and then a certain number of times that you can repeat things. And you can do similar things in Construct 3, but actually it's automatically built in looping so we aren't going to need to add that in because it automatically has that forever loop so every time we touch the side of the maze it will always go back to the beginning and that loops built in for us so we aren't going to need to worry about that so much um, so just be aware there are different types of loops we can have a loop where we have a set number of times to repeat um, and you can change the number of times you repeat so here is an example where we repeat five times or and then repeat twice this is a nested loop which means that it's actually going to repeat seven times but inside that loop, it's got a repeat of five times of wake up, go to school, go home, and then wake up, play, go home. Um, and those two sets of repeats are going to happen um, seven times. So it means it's going to go wake up, go to school, go home, wake up, go to school, go home, wake up, wake up, go to school, go home, wake up, go to school, go home, wake up, go to school, go home. Then it's going to do wake up, play, go home, wake up, play, go home. And then it's going to start all over again and repeat the whole lot a second time. And it'll keep doing that until it's done it seven times. Um, and you could even nest it again. So this could be an example of a whole term. Um, so you can keep adding more and more nested loops, but we aren't gonna need to worry too much about that with what we're doing, because as I said, we're gonna be using a forever loop, but that loop's already built into our game. So we've done that already. As I said, look, you don't need to use a forever loop in Construct 3 because um, events are run every tick, which means roughly 60 times a second until the program ends. Very handy. Okay, so what would you like to have along the pathway in the maze? So these are, you could have things that are, are a bonus or sprites that are challenging. Um, and you wanna to have to think about what will happen when the sprite interacts with other sprites. 
So what we're going to do next, you can either choose or draw your own sprites. So you might in the future like to have a go at adding your own sprites from things that you've, you've found on the internet, or you can draw your own. So we're going to continue with drawing our own for this workshop, but be aware that if you want to, if you want to experiment more, you can use the little folder icon and you can add anything that's uh, saved on your computer. So that's something that you might want to think about. So what we're going to do is we're going to add ants for our frog to collect and we're going to put them the blocks in um, a particular order to make it so that when the frog collides with the ant um, it makes the ant disappear so he's, these are the blocks that we're going to need to use frog ant on collision with ant and destroy um, and we're going to have a little think about what order those are going to need to go in but before we do that we're going to draw our ant sprite now if you don't want to do an ant that's absolutely fine. You can do whatever you want to do um, as your design for whatever your frog is going to eat. So you're going to go back into the layout and you're going to do a double click in the layout and go to insert new object. And we're going to add sprite. There we go. Crosshair, click and then draw whatever it is that you're going to have your character eating. So as I said, I'm going to go for an ant. Um, but you can draw something different if you want to. You could draw a little fly. Um, it's completely up to you, but I'm going to do a little ant. Um, I'm going to keep him fairly simple. Whoops. <laughs> Remember, you can use undo if you need to redo something if it's not gone quite to plan. There we go. I'm going to use the fill tool to fill it in. And I'm also going to just do a little bit of highlighting. I think that will look quite nice. I'm going to make white. And go back to that. I'm going to add a little bit of highlighting just to make it look a little bit 3D. There we go. There's my lovely little ant. And I'm going to close it. He's, oh, what have I forgotten to do there? I forgot to remove that excess background. So I'm going to double. I'm going to go back into it by double clicking it over in the object types. And I'm going to use this one here, the little crop tool, to just get rid of any excess background. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name it. So I'm going to right click go to rename and I'm going to call it ant. There we go. So there is my ant. He's also too big so I'm going to resize him to the size that he needs to be for my maze. Okay so I'm going to show you the events, uh, the, the different blocks that we're going to use for the events again. So give you a chance to see if you can work out what order they need to go in. Um, if you want to actually have a go at doing this yourself before I move on to actually putting it in the right order, then feel free to pause. So these are the blocks that we're going to use um, and I'm going to put those into the right order in my event sheet in just a moment. So if you need to pause before I do that, pause now, see if you can work it out yourself and then unpause, um, ready to find out if you were right in just a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that into my um, event sheet. So I have got my event sheet ready and open. Remember, you've got your layout, which has got your maze and your characters on and your event sheet. I'm gonna to go to add event. I'm going to go to my frog. I'm gonna say when my frog collides with, and I'm going to select my ant, there we go, so when my frog collides with my ant, it's going to make the ant, and it's going to make him destroyed. Now there's, uh, there are actually a few different things you could do here, you can use destroy, which is just there, or you can also use um, visible, set visible, and you could change it to make him invisible, that's another way of doing it. You could experiment with both and decide which one you prefer if you want to, I'm going to use destroy. There we go. So now if I test my game, you'll see, there we go, we'll reload it. When I go down and I collide with my little ant, there you go, he's disappeared. And just like I did with my maze blocks, I would go back into my layout and I would do a right click copy. There it is. And then right click and then paste. And I'd add the number of ants I want to fill up my maze there we go okay now there we go so that's pretty much what we're going to we're going to stop there i'm going to give you a few options of things that you could do to extend um this further to give just give you a couple of other ideas um but i'm not actually going to go those in a huge amount of detail just because we haven't got enough time to do that so that's really a quick introduction to making a maze game in construct 3 um 
for today. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll do a very quick look at a couple of things that you could do to extend things further. Um, if you are interested in extending these further, you might want to look at the instructions uh, that are in the resources I showed you earlier on. Um, and you can find more detail on how to extend it further in those if you if you wanted to. So you could add a score, for example, so that if the ant touches the, the frog, not only does it disappear, but it also adds one to a score. Um, so that's something that you could do. And you do that by adding variables and you can add a global variable called score. And you do that just by right clicking um, in the event sheet and you can add that in there. So, and then you can do things like use text and things on the screen. Um, that's one, one option of what you could do. The other thing, so you can then add it in as, as a variable. Um, the other thing that you can do if you want to, I'm just gonna, sorry, I'm just skipping through very quickly, is you can add some uh, other uh, sprites that do different things. So you could experiment with having something like a golden key that makes you go to another level. Um, you could also add other objects that make you move around faster in the layout as well. That's another option of things that you could potentially do um, to add some more interest to your design. Um, but that is actually where we're going to leave it for today. So you've made a really simple maze game and you've been able to add quite a lot of detail into it in, in a short amount of time. You have added a um, sprite which moved around a maze. You then also added a um, added the maze blocks which we added some events to that meant that if you touch those blocks you would go back to the original position. And then we added a second sprite object that your character could actually eat. So that's what we did with adding our ants. And then we made those disappear when you touched those ants um, in the game. And then we talked about a couple of things that you could potentially go on to do, such as adding a score or adding other objects to make different things happen. Um, so I really encourage you to have a go at adding some other objects and experiment with changing different settings when those objects are collided with. So for example, you could make your um, frog speed up if you collided with a piece of pizza or whatever you wanted to do. So in this workshop you've learned about how to implement a pre-written algorithm within a game engine such as Construct3. You've learned how to create, we didn't actually move on to creating and using variables in our, in our game because we ran out of time, but you could do that by adding a score if you wanted to do that yourself um, as an extension, that's fine. Um, we also learned about using selection and loops within our game. And um, what you could do now is actually get someone to play your game so far and get them to identify ideas for improvement. And you could actually imp um, add improvements and modify your game to make it better. Um, and if you do that, that would be an example of implementing changes to your game based on evaluation. So that's pretty much what we've done, what we've, um, we've completed today. As usual, I'm going to hop over into the um, stream chat if any of you've got any questions about what we've been doing or want to add a little bit more detail oh you can hear me talking there we go um so if you do have any questions for me i'm in the chat right now so I'll pop those in just while i'm waiting for that i'm going to do as usual a quick sneaky peek of what we're going to be doing next time so next time we're going to be creating a game but we're going to be using scratch next time rather than construct three and that is going to be based around the game um, Starlink. So we're going to be using special uh, Starlink resources that are only available to you if you're uh, accessing this via Digital Schoolhouse. And you're going to be accessing special assets to use in your game, which are real assets that um, Ubisoft actually used in their Starlink game. So that's what we're going to be doing next time. We'll be doing Unplugged for part one and then a plugged session for the second part where you'll be making your game in scratch. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing next time. If you're interested in joining us, then please do join us for that next time. But I'm going to hop back over into the chat in case any of you have got any questions. So please pop your questions into the chat now if you do have a question for me based on what we've been doing today or about extending your game or anything else that you might want to ask. Um, I'm in the chat now, ready and waiting. So I'll just give you a little bit longer in case anyone does have any questions. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's workshop. It has been a bit of a whistle stop tour. Hopefully you've been able to keep up with me. Let's see. Any questions?
doesn't look like we've got questions today that's fine okay so um, I hope you really enjoyed today's workshop. That is the end of today's um, session looking at using Construct 3 for creating a maze. So this has been Crazy Mazes Part 2. I hope that you've really enjoyed working with me on designing your maze in Construct 3. And if you do have any questions later on and you want to pop those over to me, feel free to send them at, um, at, to my email address. I'll be delighted to answer your questions. So that only leaves me to just finish off our session by saying thank you very much for taking part. I hope you've had fun and learned something new. If you've enjoyed this workshop, check out our YouTube channel for more follow along activities. If you've got any questions or feedback for me, please email dsh at uki.org.uk. Now we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, please feel free to share any images or videos using the hashtag computing at home. You can do that on Twitter or on Facebook. Also, for those of you who love writing, Digital Schoolhouse have launched a creative writing competition, which you can find more information about on our website. If you are the parent of a primary age pupil and are interested in finding out about how, dig how Digital Schoolhouse can work with your child's school, you can find out more about our programme on our website, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.